Welcome back, everyone. Now, President Ekufuado has nominated former member of Parliament's Finance Committee, Dr. Anthony Akotose, to head the newly created Ministry of Monitoring and Evaluation. The ministry would monitor promises made in the government's budget and ensure they are met on time. Announcing the second batch of ministerial nominees, President Ekufuado gave details about the new ministry and why Dr. Anthony Akotose was nominated to head it. Now, first of all, a minister who's going to be responsible for seeing to it that the targets set by government in our manifesto, as well as those that are set out in the budget, are met. Not just met, but met on time. So that the entire government machinery at all, at all times is going to have somebody who's calling up and asking questions. Why are there delays in this? Why are there delays in that? It's an onerous task that we have taken upon ourselves, a very ambitious program of social and economic development before the country. And if that weapon, that tool for insisting that the work of government is efficient, is effective, and is timeless, we will not be able to deliver on that ambitious program. MPP has so many high-quality people, and I've chosen somebody who already has an extensive experience in the high level of governance in our country, who is himself a very renowned economist, who's very successful in his first period of office in Ghana, and with his very strong understanding of the budgetary processes and targets, I believe he's the ideal man to perform this new role that I'm talking about. His very impressive background in his education. And then for the last few years, since we went into opposition, he's been the ranking member on our side on the Committee on Finance. He's also been a member of the Interior and Defense Committee. But in the last years of President Kufo's government, he was Minister of State, the Minister of Finance, and effectively acted as the Minister for Finance at the end. So that knowledge, that understanding of the issues that he has to deal with, I think he's there. <coughs> Come and join me. <laughs> He's also a member of parliament for Old Tafo in Kumase, senior figure in the parliament. So we'll have the, the rank to talk to everybody, fellow members of the cabinet as well as members of parliament. So it is Dr. Antonia Kuto Osei who I want to place in this role. All right, so that was a while ago at the flags of our house. Other nominees also announced include Ignatius Bakwewa, Ministry for uh, Employment and Labor Relations, Kweko Furi Siyama for Ministry of Transport, Minister for Railways uh, Development Designate Joe Gate, Minister for Roads and Highways Designate Kwesi Amwakwata, Minister for Communications Esla Owusu Kufo, uh, Minister for Works and Housing Designate Samuel Atache and Minister for Environment, Science and Technology designate Professor Kwabna Frimpong Wating. Moving on now, the economic management team of the new administration has been given details on how they plan to manage the economy and the 2017 budget. This came to light after President Ekufuado named his finance minister designate Ken Ofuriata and senior minister Yao Osafumafu. The two are expected to be members of the administration's economic management team. George Afe has more. According to the two individuals who were announced yesterday by President Enako Fuadu, their plan is to focus on tax compliance to help improve revenue. This is expected to give real meaning to its plan of tax cuts. Let's hear from Senior Minister Yosafumafu, whose main focus is to help manage the economy. My first step, my first step is to look at 
the revenue sources and make sure that if, and they are, not a if, make sure that we block all the loopholes in the revenue side. That, that is the, the, the softest way. That it does not involve any expenditure. It involves looking at the system and blocking all leakages at the customs, at the airports, at the harbors, everywhere that we have revenue, we must block the leakage. Finance Minister-designate Ken Oforiata has indicated that they will be carrying out some expenditure cuts to help stabilize the... I, I think we can increase revenue uh, because there are certain leakages that we can block. I think we can get value for money um, in our expenditure and that will also create you know, that kind of space for us uh, and to reduce the budget deficit. And once you do that, you have space you know, to then promote your agriculture and all of the other promises that we have. He has also been talking about how they plan to deal with the country's rising debts, which has crossed the 70 percent mark. When you have a debt to GDP ratio, you know, over 70 percent, there are certain structural things you have to do. Uh, but that is, you know, financial engineering, and we'll do what we have to do for that to suppress the amount of interest we are paying, uh, because that takes up a lot of capital. There will also be some realignment of funds so they can go ahead with initiatives like the Zongo Development Fund and $1 million for every constituency. The team has also indicated that this year's budget should be approved by Parliament before the end of March. This should mean that presentation should be done from the middle of March this year. So how is the business committee reacting to these new appointments? Some business executives are confident in the economic management of the new administration to help stabilize the economy. President Ekofuado, like we've been telling you, named Ken Oforiata as finance minister-designate, Alan Chiamantin for trade, and Yao Osafuma for a senior minister. The captains of industry also expressed reactions to some new appointments made by the president. Alan Chiamantin... Uh... industry minister. Uh, we know he has occupied that portfolio, that position before. So he's not new to I mean, the, the office. Uh, looking at his background, what he's done before, definitely uh, we think that he's the right person uh, to, at this point in time, to ensure that the private sector, you know, can be brought to that level of being able to uh, may take off. Uh, let us understand that we are in uh, situations where uh, business confidence you know, has sunk so low. We have had challenges in the past two, three years. Uh, there had been issues where the private sector you know, has been crying for you know, that needed support. I said not too long ago that the, uh, the new government should focus on resuscitating I mean, companies that are virtually collapsing. And I think that if you have a seasoned person like uh, Mr. Chimantin, definitely it gives a lot of hope I mean, to industries. The fact that the government is going to be supporting business is a step in the right direction. Um, but there are lots of things that need to be done to make, to make that a reality. When you looked at the last survey done on doing business in Ghana, we recognize that it has, Ghana has actually dropped. Um, and therefore, there are a number of other things other than government statement about Ghana being open for business, which I think is, is, is positive, that needs to be done to make sure that Ghana is able to attract direct foreign investment and make doing business in Ghana a lot easier. The president has been talking about private sector driven thing and basically once we touch the taxes I think that will happen. What should be the approach when it comes to this whole tax issues because yes there are certain modeling or modules that are shown that when there are indeed low tax levels you get more people paying. There are some modules that have also shown that you might have to have it higher because it's just a few people who are paying. Uh, how should this minister be guided in his approach in trying to review some of these taxes. They might be good, but again, you should look at whether it would hurt the revenue. I, I think basically that is the issue as to which of the two models um, to pick. But when you look at cross Ghana, you realize that most of us 
are complaining about the taxes, which means that if you bring it down and bring a lot more people into the net, then your leverage becomes better. For finance, you know, we have traditionally had uh, economists, uh, we have had uh, accountants, and uh, this is the first time in our history that we are getting an investment banker as a, as a finance manager, uh, as a finance minister. And um, knowing the kind of difficulties we, we go through as an economy, uh, particularly in uh, finding money to invest, finding money to put it into economic planning. I mean, if uh, we have an investment manager who is, uh, knows the intricacies of um, what uh, I would call financial engineering, uh, it will be an opportunity to make use of his skills to help us find uh, more money to invest in other areas of the economy and actually grow the economy. Mm -hmm. Let's move to some other big story that is developing today. Inflation has dropped marginally to 15.4% for the month of December 2016, the lowest in 18 months. The 0.1% decline from the November rate of 15.5%, according to the statistical service, was mainly driven by non-food inflation. Deputy government statistician Bawadia, who announced the new figure in Accra, said the reduction of the price of petroleum products last month may have impacted most of the non-food components. The rate of inflation has two main components, the food inflation rate and the non-food inflation rate. The food inflation rate for December 2016 was 9.7% as compared with 9.3% recorded in November 2016. The non-food inflation rate for December 2016 was 18.2% as compared with 18.7% recorded in November 2016. Now the non-food inflation rate is more than one and a half times that of the food inflation rate. That is for December 2016. The non food inflation rate. Thanks for joining us again. Now, many of the most successful people in business today started out as teenage entrepreneurs. And that could very well be the story of Inshira Nyako, the 13-year-old who has started exploring business opportunities in Biden. Now, one of the things we aim to do on the Joy Business Van is not only to showcase and empower Ghana's small and medium-scale enterprises, but inspire young people who have ambitions of setting up their own businesses and so we took Inshira to meet her role model, Joyce Owusu, the owner of Purple Trends. The Joy Business Van is brought to you by Busy, making good things happen. Inshua Nyako is only 13, but she has big dreams for the future. She wants to do business. Hey. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hi. You finally made it. Yes. Today, she's here to meet one of her role models. So, Apple Trends GH was last year acknowledged as best fashion accessories designer at the Ghana Fashion Awards. Inshua is a bead accessories maker herself. She shares how she discovered I'm fashion, so I I saw bead making as like an aspect of it. So I became interested in it, and I like it. I 
When I started, I realized I like it. So she got a little training and kick-started her own designs. Well, um, I make them like the necklace and the bracelets with the earrings. So they come as a set. But after watching the story of Purple Trans GH on the Joy Business van, Inshira discovered there was more she had to learn. I liked her story because most people were startling, but then she started trying on her own and yeah, it was successful. So I'm hoping to learn some new designs and stuff. These, these are amazing, trust me. How long have you been doing this? Um, I started last year, but it's mostly during the vacations. Wow. So have you sold anything yet? Yes. Oh, okay, so you're already making money from it. I mean, they are beautiful, no two ways about it. You're doing very well, I would say. Um, but then you, there are a lot of things that you also have to know about them. The designs are crazy, but then beading isn't always about the designs. There is more to it. Talk of the finishing and other things. Yeah. I don't know. I've spotted a few things and I'll help you on that, mm -hmm. especially with the finishing. Okay. Great. Time to get to work. After a few hours, Inshira appears to have gotten a hang of the new design she has been taught. Joyce leaves her with this piece of advice. Growing up, people had the mentality that these things are for people that do not have the opportunity to be in school or to be educated. But then, I can tell you now that the story is different. I'm an university graduate, I'm a degree holder, and I do this. And I intend to even go higher than just the degree. So don't give up. You can have your master's or anything, and you still be in it. Make sure you you invest right, save, know the, the, the right tools and materials to work with. And I always say that when you do all of these without God, you won't succeed. So don't also give up on God. So thank you very much for coming and bye-bye. Inshira is leaving Purple Trends G8 today with not only some new skills, but with greater motivation to pursue her dream of creating her own bead accessories brand. Most people think bead making is for um, people who don't have any other job to do, but in these days, like for example, taking the example of her, she's a degree holder who is also doing bead making and it's good. I'm motivated and inspired and I'm determined to um, make good use of this big making. Well, at age 13, I can't recall what I was doing with my life. Way to go, Inshira. Well, you can watch a repeat of this episode of the Joy Business Van on the marketplace that's at 1 p.m. on this same channel. You can also track the story online on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. Time now for your busy bits. Did you ever sit down at a computer that had the sound turned way up? Ever wanted to hear something on the computer but you couldn't because the volume was turned down too low? Here's what to do when you judge the sound on your computer to be wrong. Go to the taskbar at the bottom of your desktop screen. Look for the little grey speaker symbol on the right hand side and left click on it. The icon should appear on your screen and give you the opportunity to change your sound level or mute it by checking the mute box at the bottom. For more speaker options, you should right click on the speaker symbol in the taskbar, then select open volume control to make adjustments to the menu. 
If you only have the speaker that is in the computer to work with, no external speakers, the sound quality is probably pretty low already. Making adjustments to the menu might not be of any use to you. The Joy Business Van was brought to you by Busy, making good things happen. Let's take our interview for the day and Joy Business caught up with the director of the executive MBA program at Lancaster University in Ghana, Chris Saunders. He shed some light on how effective leadership is vital to the operation of organizations. The key thing is developing leadership. So organizations are not particularly great at um, identifying and developing um, the leaders within the organization. And it's a difficult thing to do because one of the, one of the first professors of leadership, John Adair, used to say, is people don't think hard enough about leadership. They don't think hard enough about what, what does it, this organization need at all the different levels within this organization in terms of people leading at different levels. And how are we going to develop the organization to do that? And uh, that's very hard because um, ideally you would have a, a program that you would put a lot of people in. So if you're a very large organization, you're giving the whole organization an understanding of how that business works, of how things will happen in that business, and the organization gains its own understanding of what leadership is, which is very important because then you get consistency. You know, it, so I think that the biggest issue that they face is actually developing the leaders within and then allowing those leaders to take over, giving them the space um, to lead. I think companies are, are, are very poor on that. So coming down to the whole concept of leadership, now, can you tell us how crucial is leadership to, uh, leadership to um, business organizations, the management of most business organizations? How crucial is leadership? Leadership is, is essential to, to an organization, I think. Um, I'm very biased because I'm a leadership scholar. That's my, it's my, my area. But I think um, organizations can be, can be managed well, and they would just kind of continue on in the way that they are. Um, leaders tend to push the boundaries. Leaders tend to be focused on the future. So if you want an organization that's actually going to grow and improve revenue, then you need someone who sees where that organization could go, so sees potential, sees opportunity, and knows how to motivate the organization, the people within the organization, to move towards that goal. Um, so I believe a leader needs to, be a, needs to be good on, needs to be strong on the management side of things, but has to have that extra element of saying, do you know what, this is where I think our market is, this is where I think we need to, to get to, and this is how we're going to get there, and show people that what's possible. And you can get yourself updated on all the stories we brought you on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Thanks for watching.